boy? Yes, you are. <laughs> are you are you filming? I am. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're at Crown's Engines at Vitalik. Today we start our walk here at Vitalik. We're going to go down the coast and heading towards Land's End. We're not going that far. We're going to Kinijik Valley where there's another mining works that we can explore. Our walk today comes from nine walks around St Justin's and Ives. It's walk number four, Vitalik to Kinijik. Vitalik is on the north coast of Cornwall near St Just. We parked here. This is the National Trust's car park at Vitalik. Nice big car park. So Cornwall is not open yet, we're still in lockdown with cafes and the National Trust Cafe there and the countdown is still shut. So believe it or not, this is May in Cornwall. It's cold, it's windy. I don't even know if you can hear me. It's wind! It's like November! Oh, the tonic's fantastic and we've been here many times. Usually pole duck chasing. <laughs> yeah. so We've never actually walked from Botanic down to Cape Cornwall, have we? It's one of those bits of the coastline we haven't done the whole bit. Filling in a gap. As you can tell by the swathes of thrift and foxgloves out at the moment and the sea campion, it is May. I promise you it's May. It doesn't feel like May. But it is, and we, we should get some stunning visuals down nearer the engine houses. I'm so excited. I think it could look really good. It feels really good to be out and about. And somewhere a bit different, much as we've enjoyed walking around home. It's lovely to be out. What are you doing? You keep disappearing off the path. Well, I was... So occasionally you'll come along and you'll see like an opening like this. And I think they're old adits, some of them, but I think some of them have been covered up as well. For me, it's things like this that I love. Look at this. It's a solid old bit of gear this is, isn't it? Iron ring there that they would have used back in the day when it was uh, mining activity here. shapes like that. He's happy. He's exploring. As long as he doesn't disappear down a hole, we'll be alright. He's got the car keys. Metallic is quite unique in that it has a diagonal shaft. Most of the shafts in Cornwall are vertical. This one is diagonal and they've, they've built a railway down the same slope, that diagonal slope. It's amazing. It's actually got a load of information here about the, the mine itself and the old pictures, look, with all the scaffolding on the cliff face. Love watching this thing. National Trust has now roped off that area it does get so narrow I'm not surprised that's a tiny narrow path it does get a bit uh, I don't really like it I have been down there and you can get up to that flat platform and you see both engine houses side by side it makes a fantastic photo so we're gonna walk back up the cliffs this is actually just a little detour on the walk we haven't started the walk proper but up at the higher levels nearer the count house there's some arsenic works and the labyrinths and all the arches so we can go and explore that and then we'll start our walk so come on so here at Vitalik you have a fantastically preserved example of how they used to extract arsenic it was a byproduct but then the price of it it became more valuable than the tin and copper ore that they were actually mining. So then they sold the arsenic, so how did they extract it? This huge chimney was used to draw warm air through this labyrinth of tunnels. And as the warm air came along this maze of tunnels, the arsenic 
would calcify on the edge and the walls and the roof of these tunnels. You can even see some of it here. So then they would come along and brush it off or scrape it off, bang it off with a spade, collect it, bag it up and sell it. Obviously arsenic is poisonous. Some people theorise that people became immune to the poison. It's meant to make your hair look really shiny, but what a price to pay, hey? So all these tunnels link up. Oh, duck down. Oh, look who's with me. Hello, puppy. Let's take you on a little wander through the labyrinth. Sarah. Where's he gone? Hello. Oh, I see him. Hello. Hello. Great fun, isn't it? Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bit of kid, isn't it? Yeah. Can you imagine doing this as a job, though? Having to enter this place. It would have been pitch black, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because you'd have to have it sealed for that draw effect. So this is for arsenic, is that correct? Yeah, you and can it, still see it, some of it on the walls there. Isn't that highly poisonous? You said it's a pesticide, I think, didn't they? Yes, out in America, on the cotton, cotton beetle, it killed cotton beetle. And it was a byproduct of the mines, wasn't it? it actually kept the mines going at a time when the tin and the copper really wasn't that valuable. Yeah, and it was towards the beginning of the 20th century. So that's when this had its last flurry, its last flicker of life here, finally closing in 1915, 1916. Uh, hmm. It's amazingly preserved though, isn't it? Let's go through here. <laughs> Should we have a bit more fun and go on a walk now? Come on. What's the first instruction? Open the book. <laughs> So the first walk instruction tells us to turn left onto the coastal path and head towards West Wheel Owls, not owls like it's spelled, but owls. Owls. AKA Wheel Leisure, <laughs> used in Poldark. <laughs> Poldark country. We can find Ross. Oh yeah, go on then. Ross Poldark, Sarah. Yeah. He obviously suffered from piles. Ah, uh, need cream for that. Are we going to go and explore that? in Ross Poldark's mine, Sarah. It is. He's not home. No. no. And he hasn't fixed his roof. <laughs> this is West Wheel Owls and it's used to represent wheel leisure in the 2015 onward Poldark series. But there is something in here about the real West Wheel Owls and it says if you take a few steps off the path to the left and behind the engine house you'll find a memorial to those killed in the Wheel Owls disaster. On the 11th of January 1893, miners were blasting a new level towards the another one where they thought there'd be a rich load and it, the, basically the sea rushed in and it killed 90 men and a boy on his first day underground. How sad. Do you know what actually strikes me from that? I've, I've heard that before. Yeah. And where they talk about a boy and it makes you realise how young some of the people were that worked on the mines. Well, they were, weren't they? They had to work to help mum and dad pay for the bills. Yeah, I was always under the impression that the children sort of worked on the surface, but obviously they didn't, did they? No, it would be interesting to know what sort of age they were. I bet my mum knows. We'll have to ask her. What, when she was down the mine? No! <laughs> We're now going to leave Willows behind us. Sunny day, the sun when it comes out is lovely and warm, but we had quite a low pressure pass through last night, lots of wind and rain, and it's really churned up the sea. It's looking impressive. You can taste the sea salt on your lips. Have you notice how the cliffside is carpeted in flowers? Do you know if I were we live in Cornwall, but if I was to visit Cornwall, May is the month I would come in. I was coming to walk, late May, brilliant. It is, it's astonishing. So some of you may be interested to know what it's like here in Cornwall at the moment. Well, it's different. I don't know if I like it or not. Usually you jump up and down and say, oh, Cornwall to ourselves in the summer, we'll be able to get on the beaches. 
and initially that's what I did feel like and um, now as the months go on and we go to places and they're quiet it doesn't quite feel the same so it's not crystal clear today there is a bit of a sea haze mist I feel but it just adds to the drama. Proper Polduck country, isn't it? Yeah. You certainly see why they chose to film it here. As you arrive on the crest of Knidjik Headland, you'll see a ruined building and to its right, a large stonewall trench, both associated with a rifle range and in use by the 1870s. Soldiers in the trench would raise targets Flags would be flown to warm walkers and passing fishing boats and firing would begin. Search around in the turf and you may find fragments of copper jacketed lead bullets left by the Home Guard riflemen in the 1940s. No copper jacketed lead bullets, lots of bunny bumbles though. So this is the rifle trench then? Yeah. So they would have hidden in here, yeah. popped their heads out and then they would have been firing at targets? I don't know, would the targets have come up here and they'd have been over in the Heathland? No, I don't know. No, I don't know either. How does that work? But if the right ah, if the bullet jackets are here, they must have been firing here. At what though? Well perhaps they put a target on the back side of a cow in one of the fields <laughs> over there. <laughs> and then tried to shoot for their lunch. I don't know if you can hear me, but the view here is amazing. You can feel the sea spray falling on your face. Taste it. Feels like you're actually stood in the sea. It's a big wave still as well. Massive. Sound as well. Good to be alive, isn't it? I've seen them rolling along there towards Crown's Engines. Is this your new favourite view in Cornwall? Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? So much to see, isn't there? I don't know where to look first. It's astonishing. It's you compelling mesmerizing amazing doesn't do it justice i keep using that word i must stop wow so something else that's changed in cornwall with fewer visitors and fewer heavy feet i've just seen an adder and yeah i screamed <laughs> I didn't like that. Why didn't you film it? Because I was too busy screaming. <laughs> I don't like snakes. That adder, nearly adder. Oh, nearly had the dog. <laughs> We're a bit, I'm a bit confused. So there's a nice track that goes here, but there's also a really treacherous track there. And I reckon after just seeing an adder, see that I like a nice white car. What does the book say then? So we've just come down there and it does suggest you go back on yourself so I reckon it is okay. down there. Well we're aiming for over there aren't we where the yeah. chimney is. So we've got to get down in the valley somehow. So we need to give this one. Yeah go on then. You found it? Yeah. Go ye ahead. Well that's nicely done isn't it? It is very nicely done. is beautiful, full of flowers, full of colour, really tranquil. In fact, I'm getting so warm, I might have to take my coat off in a minute. It's great! <laughs> oh, now where are we going? This way. So what's it like here in Cornwall at the moment? A little update. The only thing that's open is the supermarket. The lockdown rule currently is that you're allowed to travel to exercise as long as you return to your primary residence and it was given out this morning that 
some people have been travelling to Cornwall but staying in their camper vans and they've been fined. So if you were thinking of trying to duck under the radar, don't fancy your chances really. Is that our dog? How did you get down there? More to the point, how are you getting out of there? Come on then. Oh, oh no. I think he is okay. stuck. Are you going to rescue him? No, I was hoping you would. Oh, he's stuck. Oh, oh, no, he's oh. Unstuck. oh, he's unstuck. He's stuck <laughs> I thought you were stuck for a minute, boy. Well done. Why is this bridge all wet with poor prints? <laughs> What's that all about? Are we going to go for an explore? Yes. Where's the dog? Oh, you've got him. <laughs> Welcome to Kanijik Valley. This green and tranquil valley used to be a noisy, bustling place full of machinery, timber work and activity. Workers dug the ore from deep underground to be processed on the surface on the dressing floors, rock crushing stamps and calciners that burn off the arsenic contaminants in the ore. I just realised this is a buddle. So there would have been a chute that came up and would have taken like a slime a mixture of water and crushed ore and brushes would have gone around and it would have separated by gravity as it went around and you could then extract the ore so this is a buddle what else have we got the pasty shop shot <laughs> did you say the pasty shop shot yeah. i got some have what you? do you want <gasps> yeah We've got mr pasty Hello, He's Mr. Cornish. Yeah. And you got Mrs. Pasty. Yeah. She's got a love heart on her head. Yeah. And then you got Pirin Pasty. He's Cornish too. I got bored in lockdown. What can I say? <laughs> so, does our book help us understand anything? Yeah, wonderful book. So this is the Kanijit Arsenic Works. And it says the works were built in the early 1800s and operated until the mine closed in the 1890s. The draft would have been fierce, a hurricane of sulphurous gases being disgorged into the atmosphere. In a southerly winds, the fallout dropped in the fields over the valley brow, and it is said that the ground was poisoned and would not yield a good crop of corn. It is still known as the arsenic field. So our little map is letting us down. We can't figure out if we're meant to retrace our steps from the mine workings. Well, we just don't know which side of the valley we should be walking up, do we? valley if we stay on this side will eventually come up to the bottom of St Just won't it? Yeah I, I'm pretty sure that's where we need to go but it's not obvious in the book. The instructions don't give enough detail at this point so we're a bit lost I think we might have to look at the ordnance. Yeah. I'm gonna get the ordnance out. There's the disused mine and there's indicates on here that there's footpaths both sides. End a path up the southern valley bank and turn left I think actually we're on the right side of the valley. We need to be on the western side of the valley to go up to Bassine Farm to then turn east. Right, I hope you're following this at home. It doesn't really matter. There's a footpath both sides of the valley. What's, what the problem is that we won't be able to exactly follow the walk instructions on this occasion. Just while I brought my compass and my phone, we had it completely wrong. Although that is the sea and we think of that as the north coast, that's actually west. All right. So the southern bank is that was south is over there, the other oh, side of the back. stream. So south is definitely that way, man. Yeah. Okay. Cross the stream again. Solve the mystery. This side of the valley gives you a brilliant view down onto everything. You can see the little stream tumbling down over the rocks, creating little waterfalls. And of course you can see for miles around you too. Look at that. Andrew's still grumbling. He thinks we're on the wrong side of the valley. So you don't believe the compass on my phone is what you're saying? No, because I think the 
talks about a big priest stone where John Wesley preached to, and I think that might be over there. And the <laughs> Mr. Grumpy, look at that face. <laughs> so obviously that's St. Just in the distance there, Sarah. And there are buildings here. So we're looking for Basine, is that right? Basine Farm. Basine Farm. I think it's this one. And I think that one over there mm. is probably Knidjik Farm. Where we should be heading next. Yes. Getting lost with Sarah and Andrew on Cornish walking trails. Brilliant. Let's just go and see if there's a name on this farm. I can hear cows. Oh, there they are. In the field. Going moo. Did you just say there's cows in the field going moo? Yeah. Going moo. Bazine Farm, is that right? Yeah. Look behind you. I can't see it anyway. Behind you. I'll go and ask in this property here if they know where Bazine Farm is. Oh, it's, it's here. <laughs> Sarah, you were right. <laughs> so, uh, which way now then? A footpath. Over. Yeah. This book's got a <laughs> merry dance to donuts, it, so right. we should have turned left. So this is turn left before down Basine down Farm. A track before the path swings right towards Basine Farm. So just before Basine Farm, we should turn left. But how do you know if you're at the right farm unless you come to the farm? Well, basically, you go too far, you find the farm, and then you go back. Go on back yourself. again, like we are now. Yeah. Okay. How long is this walk meant to be? Two and a half hours. <laughs> so we go down here. <laughs> it's basically yeah. at the field where the cows go moo. You turn left. <laughs> I wonder if it picked it up, the cow just went moo. <laughs> Brilliant. So we are heading down towards that very small row of cottages here, and there is actually a bridge, road bridge crossing over. So we're going to cross over the other side. And then up the other valley. The other thing about Cornwall at the moment is that not all of the car parks are open. With lockdown, the private car parks, for instance, those owned by the National Trust, they were barricaded. You literally couldn't get into them. We were down at uh, Gwythian the other evening where the entrance to the Gadrivi lighthouse spot is, and the traffic, it was just cars parked everywhere all over the road just because the National Trust hadn't yet opened its car park. It has now opened. So if you are thinking of day tripping to Cornwall, just check that the car park you intend to use is open. Turn right and immediately left at the Northern Valley Bank. Did you catch that? He's going up there. Slightly overgrown, but it's still passable. Just look out for those adders. We were musing on that the other evening, whether or not the lack of footfall traffic would mean that the footpaths are getting overgrown. So this is your answer. Yeah, I don't want to be wearing shorts along here. Stinging nettles, brambles, gorse. Great fun. So we can't really do our first video out of lockdown or easing of lockdown without commenting on how it feels really can we I mean I think it's quite strange that you've got like the pub back there that's shut it's odd because I want to dive it's in there it's a mixture of emotions on the one hand there's relief and exhilaration because you've got an element of freedom again yeah and we can go back and do what you want to do but equally so there's sadness yeah it's it's empty, isn't it? Is it is empty and soulless. It shouldn't be empty at this time of year. And it's a little bit of wariness when you see people and you've got to respect the social distancing and it's like some people don't like making eye contact, do they? And this time of year where we start to get a few tourists down yeah. and it's the lifeblood of the village these days well, it's really, isn't coming it? Coming up to half term next week. Yeah. And Cornwall's pretty much empty. But there's very little point in coming down for a day trip because there's nothing to offer either is there no the facilities right now as we speak are not open no. uh, i'm sure 
over time things will get back to normal but uh, fingers crossed it's then. just not quite the same at the moment no every time i come down here i admire this house it looks so old with the what do you call that scroll work above the launder board there and the guttering and it's just gradually falling into disrepair but this makes my heart sing in accordance with the listed building application and in association with local authority essential works required to both secure and weatherproof the property will commence with the removal of windows and temporary boarding so it looks like it's owned by the Tregothnan estate and perhaps they will bring it back into life such a shame if we were to lose this building. And it was used to portray Ross Polduck's house in the 1970s adaptation. So how could we lose it? Oh, hello. <laughs> Back to Botanic, where we parked the car. Just over there. Our walk today comes from nine walks around St Justice and Ives. Let's walk number four, Botanic to Knidgic quick look at our map. So we start here at the Count House at Botalic and simply follow the coastal path until we get to Knidgic Head. Then we come back through the mine workings up to Knidgic Farm back across fields. <laughs> our first chance to get out and film a walk since the easing and the lockdown restrictions we're now allowed to travel any distance to exercise and we chose to come to Botalic and we walk from here we took the coastal path towards Land's End to Knidgic Valley. Fantastic walk, stunning views across to Cape Cornwall. We also had an Explorer Crown's engine whilst we were here as well. Yeah, really dramatic today because we've had a, a low pressure go through it. Oh, brilliant. So we did get a bit unstuck around the Knidgic Valley getting back to here. So what, what what do you think about that? Well, luckily you've got a compass on your phone and we've got the Ordnance <laughs> Survey as well. So it's definitely turned left when you come out of the uh, mine working, sir. Yeah. Um, we got back in the end. Yeah. Yeah, the instructions work. The, the map's a bit small though, isn't it? Maps a little bit small. Yeah. yeah. So what would you score it? Uh, it's loads of history in that book for me. I, I like the book, so it's a 9 out of 10 for me. Oh, I think because the map's a bit small and we got lost, it's got to be pegged back at least two marks, so an 8 out of 10 for me. 8.5 out of 10. <laughs> Brilliant. To help us grow our channel, please subscribe and consider supporting us on Patreon.